Thanks for uh, joining us today for our conversation with uh, Jerry Thompson Jr., Chairman of Southwestern Medical Foundation, and Michael McMahon, uh, the Foundation's new President and CEO. I'm Eric Yoey, and I serve as one of the program chairs for the Cary Council. I'm excited to welcome you to this year's Learning from Leaders. First off, uh, and again for both of you, uh, the Cary Council aims to ground each meeting in our why. To get us started, we'd love to hear about how both of you got involved with the Southwestern Medical Foundation. Jerry, I'll start with you. Kind of what's your why and how did you get involved? Sure. Well, first of all, we are so proud of the Cary Council and not a meeting goes by where we don't talk about young people coming in, you know, at this stage of their lives to be engaged with UT Southwestern and the foundation to really get to understand what a crown jewel this is for the city of Dallas and this region. It is a huge impact on the future and you all will be where we are now not too far from now so we're glad to have you engaged early to learn more about it my why you know i didn't grow up always wanted to be a part of ut southwestern and the southwestern medical foundation it, it was kind of a happenstance thing and um, you, you go backwards and just you begin to understand how one thing leads to another and you know, right after business school, I uh, joined a political campaign for the first time. This guy named Bill Clements was running for governor. One thing led to another. He became governor, became governor again. And then this guy named James Huffines became his appointment secretary. And James reached out to me and said, Jerry, uh, we'd like you to become a part of what we're doing here in Texas. And the, the charge I have is to, from Governor Clements is to bring in young people into the state government and we'd love you to become part of this thing called the Texas Turnpike Authority. You know, because of what I was doing there, was invited to join the St. Paul Medical Foundation. And so I joined that foundation board. St. Paul's was later acquired by uh, UT Southwestern, and they invited me to join the audit committee. And that's where it began with the audit committee back in 1999. My wife and I are both from Dallas, and we were glad to be able to move back here when we left DC. You know, one of the things we, loved about DC was is very driven towards, you know, leading and change and, you know, what we can do to, to improve society here and around the world. Uh, when we left in 2009, we came back here. I actually used my law degree for about a hot minute. And then, uh, <laughs> but we were looking for and the Bush Center was opening, you know, I missed that. I missed the, the, the action, the being there where change was happening. Um, when the opportunity arose to go do economic policy there, you know, I looked at my wife and I said, you know, the law is great, um, but I really have a passion for this. So I jumped over there. It was a little bit of a blind leap of faith. We had just had a, our first child and, you know, here we were and I'm kind of jumping into a, a startup. Now it obviously had President Bush's name on it, so it wasn't like it was going to fail. But, um, <laughs> and, you know, went on a ride there, but all of it was very mission driven, focused, moving forward, a lot of learning, had a lot of great leaders from Mark Langdale to Margaret Spellings to Ken Hirsch. But as I knew I was gonna wrap things up and Ken Hirsch and I had a very open dialogue after we finished the campaign, like what am I gonna do next? And um, I started looking for those types of things. I think everybody did, after COVID, did a lot of navel gazing on what do you wanna do with your life? And so I you know, kind of did the same as everybody else did, but that was what I really enjoyed. That's why I ended up leaving the law and going to the Bush Center was that. I had started trying to figure out what I was gonna do and then I got a call about this in November and I couldn't believe it. I was on a soccer field, I looked down at my phone, there was a headhunter and I'm like, we want you to check this. I looked at Amy and I go, I think this is the one, like this is what I wanna do. And it is the mission, it's the purpose, it's the ingenuity, it's the growth. It's not static, it's gonna be continuing to change and grow, the new school of public health is coming. Uh, you know, we're gonna keep growing. UT Southwestern is growing from a spot up, uh, you know, to the whole region and spreading west, spreading south, spreading north, spreading east. And I think that's really what's exciting. It really just tied a lot of things together. And that's why I'm here. It's why I'm excited. I've got a lot to learn. As Jerry mentioned, this has got an 80 year history and the history matters. And that's also exciting and fun. And um, but tying that history to the present and those who have come along before us and figuring out how we're going to go to the future. So. That's why I'm here, that's my why. Uh, it'll evolve and it'll change, but I'm, I'm excited to be here. As we've seen the Dallas community change and expand significantly over the last few years, could you guys talk about kind of what stands out to you about that growth? Um, in addition, what do you feel is kind of core to the Dallas community that you would really like to not see change? I think it's great. I think it's amazing for this community. I think it's amazing um, that Texas as a whole can be a leader on how to do business and how to grow. 
one of the great things, and this foundation really set the tone for this 80 years ago, is the private sector, you know, a doctor and a philanthropist came together and put this together and started a medical school that literally opened right over there in the hallway and that grew into this great medical center. Well, that was the Dallas community being very Dallas and saying, we're gonna take the lead and then we're gonna partner with the state of Texas and the University of Texas system and have the operations be there. And then for the last 70 years, we've been alongside our partners at the medical center, helping with endowments and estate giving and fundraising when need be. That I think is the important thing is making sure the community understands we can support all of this. We are very fortunate here in North Texas. I wanna turn the clock back 185 years and it all flows into your question with the DNA that we have here. If you were to come to this area, it was a great big grass prairie. There was a river that flowed over its banks every year and then you know, went back. But if you were to look, you would find a small village right here at Cedar Springs. This was the original settlement on Cedar Springs and the town was called Cedar Springs. But there was nothing here. And then soon settlements started coming and the city and its town fathers, uh, business people, were able to convince the Houston and Central Railroad to move the alignment of their road over one mile so that it would come into downtown Dallas. In the following year, the railroad arrived and suddenly Dallas had that intersection. And it was connected north and south down to the Gulf and up to Kansas. And, and soon would be connecting to all of the eastern seaboard uh, cities, great cities of the United States and west as it eventually would head on out to California. But that's why Dallas was located where Dallas is. It was in the middle of a grass prairie, but that intersection made it different. And the city just kept growing and growing and growing. And as Michael mentioned, uh, Dr. Carey came to town and said, why not a great institution here in the city of Dallas? I mean, these eastern cities that I've seen, St. Louis and others, they've built great institutions in the last 50 years. We can do the same thing here. But from the very beginning, when you look at what's happened in Dallas, you know, transportation, roads, airports, schools, hospitals, uh, water, sewer, flood control, parks, everything that you see here, it hasn't been government who made that happen. Government may have been a part of it in the end, but it's always been the business community and local civic leaders who took the initiative to make things like that happen. And the same thing is so true with UT Southwestern. You know, this is an institution, while it has some support coming from the state, primarily the catalyst was always individuals, individual people saying, we need this here. And so you go back with the DNA thread from the very beginning, it was that bootstrapping effort of we're gonna make something here from nothing in this prairie field. And that's especially true with UT Southwestern. When you look at Dr. Carey and Carl Hoblitzel and later Dr. Sprague and then Kern Wildenthal and what Dan Podolsky is doing today, these gentlemen have just taken the initiative to create from scratch an institution which is relatively young but it still is, you know, it's advancing so fast. It's in the ascendancy and everybody around the world now recognizes what they're doing here, not only with research, but also with clinical and teaching. Uh, and they're just in awe of what we have been able to accomplish here. So my hopes as we look forward with all the people coming into town is that people understand that don't just turn to government and expect that they're gonna do this for you, but go ahead and get involved, take the initiative, and uh, sooner or later, things will happen, and you'll be amazed how it's embraced by, embraced by the Dallas community. Some of our best friends we have in the neighborhood are their imports from somewhere else. It's been, uh, it's been a lot of fun to get to know them, their stories, but I think one of the things this group and all the other groups can do is, you know, as we all, of course will is welcome them in, but like show them and teach them without telling them, but how things have operated for the last 185 years around Dallas, but in particular around whether it's this foundation or others that, you know, we value the, the individuals and the business community and ideas are welcome. And, you know, I think several of them are coming from places where it was kind of the reverse and they, they don't understand it quite yet. So I think that's one of the things we can do is, is get them engaged in groups like the Cary Council or whatever it is that you're involved in um, and really just show them the, the kind of North Texas way and the Dallas way and um, you know, welcome them to, to join in. But trying to figure out how to, to match mission with purpose on the Young Professionals group 
And I think this group has done a really good job. Michael gets a lot of credit for helping on this in the last few years. And I think it's connected the dots. But I think one of the mission critical things is gaining the knowledge, uh, the understanding of what all is going down at the medical center as it continues to grow. And then ideally growing into the next leaders, whether it's board members or people sitting on advisory boards at the medical center or whatever that looks like, I think this is the group that's going to take the reins. The hardest thing in your all's lives at this stage is balance. And the easiest way to begin to get involved is find something you really like doing. And that passionate um, effort uh, will allow you to get in there and it's not really work. It could be any number of things out there that uh, are the first step to getting active. And it's amazing that um, everything builds on itself in your lives. It's a tapestry of all the things you've done in the past, all the experiences just make your life more complete and richer, but at the same time, gives you an experience and a perspective that not everybody else has. And you'll be surprised 10, 20, 30, 40 years from now, he goes, I remember when I was 25, and you know, this is what I encountered. But you'll replay those images in your mind and realize you really did learn something, even though you didn't know you were learning it at the time. We talked about earlier kind of some of the challenges with the Bush Institute and the Young Leader, or kind of Young People's Program, but just made expand on that a little bit as uh, from your experience there, and then obviously, you know, your start here. Anything takeaways wise you think about as it relates to the Cary Council and how we can keep the momentum and growth going? You know, it started with Michael and, and really keep that going. What kind of early thoughts did you have about how we continue this path of growth? Yeah, I think Jerry hit on something important too is that, you know, most of us are, including myself, are, we're, we're busy with everything going in life. Being cognizant of that, um, being thoughtful about who you ask to join the Cary Council. We want to have lots of visitors to come check it out and learn a little more, but you know, really keeping this group, which has been successful as, as a tight group who's, who's bought in but has time, and that's okay if you know, there's a lot of other things pulling people in directions, but those that get involved, making sure that we care and feed you know, those relationships, that we bring interesting things to the table, that we have great conversations, but there's also a lot of creative ways to tie other things in life to what's going on at the medical center, but broaden the scope. And um, as I said earlier, you know, the medical community is one of the linchpins of strong, smart growth for our region, along with education, along with kind of public health. You know, how can we tie those together and be good partners with others and kind of cross pollinate the, the good thought leadership and the smart people that we have in this room with other groups out there. One more question for you, Michael. What excites you most about this next chapter for the Southwestern Medical Foundation? Uh, I think it relates to, to this growth that we're, we're talking about. I think, um, you know, I, I love the new public health school. I, I think this is really great. I, I spent a lot of time with that in my previous life and really on the global aspects of the public health, but that applies so, so closely here. It's so important as that linchpin that if, if our whole community is not healthy, not everybody, we can't just have the top be healthy. We can't, we've got to take care of those all around us. Um, I think that's what's brilliant. Jerry uh, hit on this earlier about Southwestern Medical Foundation and the founding of the school here is that it was with Parkland and it was serving the general population. Dr. Carey saw that his med students were going to get to see what the general population of people were dealing with and how to treat them. There were better, better medical students coming out of that. It wasn't just treating the upper class and whatever their problems were, it was treating everybody. But the key thing about UT Southwestern is that they're not sitting on their laurels. You know, right now there's the Brain Center, what Michael alluded to, more construction projects coming, the Public Health Center, both of them named for Peter O'Donnell. Peter and Edith O'Donnell were like Carl Hoblitzels of our, of our age. Uh, together they've given away here in North Texas over 800 million, maybe 900 million dollars. And nobody knows who they were, or very few people do, because they did it all anonymously. And finally, at the very twilight of their days, uh, they agreed and their family agreed to uh, allow different buildings to be named after them. So we have the Peter O'Donnell Brain Center and the Peter O'Donnell Public Health Center coming in there as well. And uh, again, people giving back to their community in ways that will make this community exceptional. I just look at it as the best is yet to come because uh, there are so many great opportunities that we can take advantage of that people want to come to Texas to be a part of. Uh, it's a magnet, not only for, a, it's young where people want to stay here, but for drawing people in and talent in. We're seeing people who you never would have expected to come to Texas want to be here, and not just Texas, but Dallas-Fort Worth. I mean, this is, this is just an incredible opportunity, an incredible moment in time, 
and you all are here at this early stage of your career. So it's an exciting time for everybody.